Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, folks. This is Michael Adams from Nothing But the Truth. We have a special report today, a very urgent special report, a warning. Warning, warning. The Pope, the little God man, actually had to run away from rain. Let's read about this because I think it would be very insightful. Pope flees Philippine storm, cuts short typhoon mer- uh, mercy trip, of all things, a mercy trip. What does it say in this article from uh, uh, what's Yahoo.com? Uh, Pope Francis was forced Saturday to flee a fierce storm in the Philippines that killed a papal volunteer, cutting short a mercy mission to weeping survivors of a uh, catastrophic super typhoon. Wearing a yellow plastic poncho to protect him from intense rain, Pope Francis delivered an an emotional mass to 200,000 people in the typhoon rage central Philippine city of uh, Tacloban. Please forgive me if I didn't pronounce the name of the city right or correctly. However, plans to, to spend the entire day in Tacloban and nearby areas w- were uh, were devastated that were devastated by Super Typhoon Haiyan 14 months ago were ruined by another storm, forcing him to fly back to Manila at lunchtime all times. Pope says, so I apologize to you all. I'm sad about this, truly sad. And the 78-year-old pontiff told thousands of people who had gathered at one church shortly before he raced back to the airport. The Pope's plans plane made a 90-minute flight back to uh, the Philippine capital of Manila safely. But highlighting the dangers of the storm, a papal volunteer at the morning mass died as a steel scaffolding collapsed on her, a church spokesman said. A plane carrying three of uh, the President uh, Benigno's uh, Aquino's aides then overshot the runway on takeoff at uh, Taklamban, Taklobin, um, and ended up in the mud. 30 minutes after Pope Francis' plane flew back to Manila, no one was badly injured. Uh, emotional mass. The trip to Tecloban and surrounding areas was one of the top reasons for the Pope making a five-day visit to the Philippines, the Roman Catholic Church's Asian stronghold. Where he is highly, where he is a highly revered figure, and I would argue that he's more than a highly revered figure. He is the representative of Christ. Now let's just talk about Christ. What is the story in Christ in the Bible when he, through the Spirit of God, was able to walk on water and was able to conquer the elements? And we have a man who claims to be a representative standing instead of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ running away from the typhoon. I have a special guest today. I have Jorg for Juggler 66, and I would like to uh, talk with Jorg about this, hear his comments about what he thinks about this fiasco, this charade, if you will, a man who says that he is actually the representative of Christ, and yet runs away from the typhoon, and lives his followers, tens of millions of them, a Catholic stronghold, to fend for themselves. What does this say about the papacy? What does this say about Pope Francis? What do you think, Jorg? Well, he obviously doesn't have the power to make uh, wonders and uh, even to make the weather. Um, maybe Harp did a little bit of intervention there, but he didn't order. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like uh, the the flea of the locusts, you know. <laughs> and uh, when you when you watch 
the picture in the article. Uh, it seems like a, a full body condom that he wears to protect himself from the rain. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had to, he had to protect his miter, that special hat of his. You know, he had to take that off and put a yellow. Yeah, you had to take that off. But you know the story that the, the story that you were just reading that reminds me a little bit of some years ago. I think it was two or three years ago when there in Belgium here was a musical festival, uh, and uh, Eminem, the rapper, was about to make an appearance there. And my son was crazy about Eminem at that time. He still is, and uh, he really wanted to go there and see that. And the day before um, that festival started, a storm came up killed, I think, three or four people at the festival. The podiums were destroyed, and the whole festival was cancelled. And I thought at that time, that could be hard just to prevent Eminem to get here. Today <laughs> I think otherwise about that. Today I think that was maybe an act of God, so that this um, satanic um, idol of the music industry uh, cannot... Well, uh, cannot uh, present his, his songs over here in, in Belgium at that time, but uh, this reminds me a little bit of that with Pope Francis here, I, I, I really have to say. Maybe it was an act of God then, maybe it isn't an act of God right now. Um, what do you think? We think we, uh, I mean, hopefully that people, you know, these, these followers, I mean, like it says in the article, it says the crowd chants, long live the Pope as he walks off the plane immediately buffeted by strong winds and heavy rain. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And you know what? I do believe it is an act of God, but the act of God is hopefully to warn those people in that Catholic stronghold that putting all their faith in this man who actually is their repressor and a fraud and a fake to remind them of the fact of who he actually is, that they shouldn't put their faith in a pope but in their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not the Pope. Maybe he should just have spread his arms and flew away in the storm. <laughs> that, would, that would have been a kind of a sign to the people. <laughs> but yeah, you never know where he ended up, you know. And when he plunges down, maybe even back into the sea, maybe that's good for another tsunami, and they didn't want that over there. <laughs> well, this is what the Pope says. He says, quote, I would like to tell you something close to my heart, the Pope said, as many in the crowd clutched crucifixes and cried. Um, <laughs> and this is what the Pope says, when I saw in Rome the catastrophe, I felt I had to be here. And on those very days, I decided to come here, and I'm here to be with you. And immediately ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. If you don't see the irony in this, I don't know, but I do. I see it. It's, I find this tragically hilarious. That's what I find it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, the Pope, the Pope claims to be God on earth, and God makes the weather, so he must have had his fingers in there, didn't he? Because he's God, you know. He makes, he makes all the stuff. He makes the weather, and he makes all the emotions, and he makes all the people appear there soaking wet uh, right now. I mean, he's God, you know? He can do anything. He can do anything, so why didn't he just open the clouds up and let the sun shine down on him? Because, let's face it, everything that he does is sun worship. Yeah, yeah. He should see so, he you know, the sun and up the rain over there. <laughs> oh, he goes, this, he says, uh, further in the article, he acknowledged the enduring pains experienced by the survivors, which I don't find funny at all. But he says this, some of you have lost part of your family. Excuse me. All, all I can do is keep silent. Uh, um, and I walk with you all with my silent heart, said, he said. The Pope declared Jesus would never let them down. And many in the crowd said that Pontus words had indeed lifted their spirits. Well, certainly Jesus will not let you down, folks, but the Pope obviously will. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you have to understand, of course, that when the Pope talks of Jesus, he doesn't talk of the Jesus of the Bible. He talks of uh, Horus or Tammuz or whatever you want to give, give to him, or, of course, of himself. Yeah. yeah so. Um, 
So, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I find it a, a beautifully, wonderfully ironic story. I hope it truly touches people's hearts throughout the world of the fraud that is the Pope, that is the papacy. And uh, they put their faith and hope not in a man, a mere man, who dresses up in a, in, in a dress and a funny hat and slippers and acts as he's got it. I mean, he has, if anything, has demonstrated his own humanity. Not only that, he actually listened to the pilot. The mm-hmm. pilot told him to get back on the board of the plane and we had to go. He didn't listen to God. He listened to the pilot. So a, a pilot can, can tell God what to do. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. <clears throat> apparently. Apparently. So... Well, York, thank you for being a part of this special, very urgent report. And I hope that many will listen to it and come to the realization and the irony of this whole story and recognize the farce that is the papacy. Well, let's maybe conclude with saying that we hope that no uh, un... Uh, what are you going to say? That, uh, no, no civilian uh, of the... Uh, Philippine Republic is there or uh, it's being harmed or whatever. If anybody gets harmed, uh, it should be the Pope to be assigned to all the people what, what, what he really is about. You know, I mean, as far as I know, never a Pope died of an accident. So maybe he's playing crashing in some kind of hurricane or typhoon or however you want to call that there. Would be assigned to the people to wake up from the deception that's uh, the Roman pontiff, uh, the vicar of Christ on earth, is not the vicar of Christ on earth, but just an actor on the strings of Satan's theater. That's right. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, there were very there were people who were disappointed, in particular nuns and priests who were over there who felt that it was uh, uh, tragic that, that, that he uh, cut his visit short. Yeah, of course, it would be the same if you spent uh, the last 20 or 30 years uh, of your life in a convent uh, to, uh, to just experience one day when the Pope is finally coming to your remote area of the world and then something like that happens, you know. Right. It says here, groans over the uh, abbreviated visit. Uh, the priests and nuns waiting for Pope Francis at a cathedral in central Philippines must have been a bit surprised when he breathed in without the usual singing and ceremony. The bigger surprise was yet to come. Francis took the microphone, and after uh, lightening up the mood with a few words, said, I'd like to tell you something that displeases me. He then explained that his plane's pilot insisted (laughs) he would have to return to Manila almost immediately because of the approaching storm, canceling the rest of Saturday's visit. No, some of of the gathered clergy groaned, though in good-natured way, some smiling, uh, uh, smiling, uh, despite the unfortunate turn of events. Well, well that's, um, that's a little article in the end uh, where the article states, the storm is forecast to follow the Pope west across the Philippines and hit Manila on Sunday. And a crowd of up to six million people is expected to hear and celebrate Mass at the park. So maybe we have to make another urgent uh, broadcast <laughs> when the storm is even following uh, the fleeing Pope. <laughs> not the flying pope, but the fleeing pope. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. But yeah, the fleeing pope. Oh my goodness. So, you know, and it, it, it's not. You know, we're not disrespecting the people of the Philippines and what they're going through and the tragedies that they go through. What we are is challenging this whole insanity of millions of people going to the streets and worshiping this man and singing his praises as he runs and flees from the storm and from them in their own circumstances. Maybe, I, Michael, I'm yeah, sorry to interrupt you here, but I have a thought that I have to share with you right now with our listeners. You know, maybe this would be an idea for the, uh, for the editors of Charlie Hebdo. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are always doing caricatures on... Um, Muhammad and on Jesus and all that stuff. Maybe this would be an idea to do that for once with a pope. Yeah, I'm sure you they won't do. But if uh, if they did, I mean, 
Do you know the last edition of Charlie Hebdo? Normally they sell about 45,000 copies to 60,000 copies. Okay. The last, the last edition was 5 million. Mm. 5 million. That was because there was a lot of money pumped in there because they have to hype this, right? Oh, yeah. Now, now these Hebdo people should maybe get an idea and make a caricature of, um, of the fleeing Pope uh, over there, and then they would have something really to express. But you know, we know that will never happen because the people who you you don't bite the hands that feed you. So. Sure. Well, my friend, thank you for joining me in this special report. And then, well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I I don't want to sound so disrespectful, but I find the whole thing disrespectful. Not me, but actually the Pope and what he actually has done and is doing and what he's his his complete from his 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 people and this point. Surely if he represents God he would have some way of protecting them from this circumstance. In some way we'd have him help him, you know, so well maybe he'll send him a bunch of ponchos that will help. <laughs> yeah, a few more full body comments. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Everyone take care. Talk to you later. Bye bye.